now on with we've got Elizabeth, I think, up next, uh, going to be speaking to us um, uh, from a simple chatbot to a fully programming programmable dating coach. That's it. Wow, Hi. fantastic. Hey, Elizabeth. So should I share now? Yes, please. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Uh, perfect. Let me try to play that. And you've got some video content as well to... Yes. Um, Is that well, right? Do you see my well, screen correctly? We can see your screen. I'm going to jump off so that you can take it away. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Elizabeth Mucci and I'm the chatbot product lead at Mythic Group. And Mythic Group, for those who don't know, is the European arm of Match Group. So I'm here today to talk to you about love uh, because yes, APIs can also help you find love. In 2016, Lara was born. Lara is very smart. In her first year, she learned how to speak uh, French and English. In her second year, she was able to speak and understand about eight languages. In her third year, she was speaking with a clear voice. And in her fourth year, she became a fully scalable dating coach and helped a Japanese friend become also a dating coach. And yes, Lara is virtual. She's an AI and she's our dating coach chatbot. So let me start from the beginning. As I mentioned, in 2016, Facebook integrated the chatbots into Messenger. It was a really good opportunity for us to test the traction for a dating chatbot. Because it was really like a quick test, uh, we use already available tools uh, like Dialogflow of Google. Dialogflow is a tool to build a conversation of a chatbot in a non-linear way, if you want to know. Um, so we just connected Dialogflow with our middleware that connects to our API or with our microservices in Mythic. With this flow, we could try uh, a very easy, a very simple flow, uh, the what we call the registration form. So basically you would say what, who you're looking for, a woman, a man, your birth date, uh, your location, then your email address, and then you would just, you would just have to agree to the terms and conditions. That was it. Uh, a very simple flow, but it proved itself because we discovered that a conversational rec form like this, re registration form, can actually have a registra registration rate of 30% higher than the other test. So that was huge compared to what we did before. So we decided to continue building Lara. The first real use case that uh, we wanted to try next is for the user to be able to search for some, someone, which is a minimum when you're in the dating world. And so for that, we did a new service called NLP. NLP for Natural Language Processing. It means like the human, the, the user can talk in a natural way, a human way, like do a real sentence. Uh, and then NLP will transform it into a computable computer understandable uh, sentence. So here how it works. So first, Lara will ask you to describe your ideal match, to which you will answer, I'm looking for a dark hair, blue eye tall man, for example. He will go through the middleware, which uh, will receive a text query, and then through dialogue flow, uh, which wouldn't understand it because it's not an exact match, so it's not a button, or it's not something that we enter already, like a yes or a no. So we'll pass it over to NLP. And our NLP will then uh, understand it, transform it, and then uh, detect two things. One is an intention, which is exactly what it is, meaning the intention of the user. So here, search for someone. And the second uh, piece is a list of entities with their value. So eyes color, blue. I was looking for a blue eye man. Air color, dark, and eight. Tall, so here we translate it to more than 180 centimeters. Then it will go back to the flow, which uh, now has all the elements to understand it and trigger the right intent, what you call an intent. It's one piece of the conversational uh, design. And then send it back to the middleware and to the microservices to launch the right action and show to the user, Ryan, 44 year old, living in Paris. 
And the, the good thing with NLP is that it enables also to refine the profile. So if the user was saying, no, Ryan is too old, or I want somebody younger, or I don't want brunette, or I want only blonde, we could understand that. And Nara would change the criteria preference here at the edge and then search for another profile for you, like we do all the, all the steps except NLP. Another use case that's been enabled with NLP is what we call small talk. Small talk is what you do between two humans. Uh, so basically, you will ask someone how the weather at your place, how your kid, etc. So people do the same with chatbot. And because we're in the dating world, they usually ask about Lara, about if, they are, if she has a boyfriend or if she's ever been in love. But also, people love to, have, uh, to ask chatbot about jokes. So we have a few answers to that. So we had a good Lara. Um, she was smart. She was able to search for someone. But we felt like we could do a little bit more. And to do a little bit more, to sustain our ambition, we decided to optimize our system. So what does that mean? It means like we, didn't, we decided to internalize the tools. And so to get rid of the dialogue flow, to build our own uh, bricks of conversational design. So there was two elements, one back element of understanding the conversational design and, and triggering the right intent, which I explained just before. And then there was a back office. The back office uh, allows a person to create uh, the chatbot conversation. And it's quite a complex task to manage, and it requires a full-time person dedicated to it. And that's why in my team, uh, we created the role of conversational designer. So let me explain just a bit what a conversational designer is. Uh, the conversational designer is half tech, half product. Half product because she needs to deeply understand who the, US, who, who the user is and how to talk to them. And also, uh, she needs to have a taste for creating and testing scenario, like if she was a scenarist in Hollywood, because this is what we built, scenarios for people to, to go in. And then half tech because uh, she manipulates lots of technical uh, elements such as variables parameters function but um she's uh, she's also she needs also a lot of logic so with this new role and this new sack we could then translate clara into many more languages many more european language and launch in many more countries so that's cool and then it allows us also to tackle a new challenge uh, bringing lara to google home with a real voice the challenge here, you have to realize that uh, we went from text to vox, voice, which is very different. Uh, on the text part, you have the buttons, which you don't, don't have on the voice. So you have to put a real effort on creating a real question, like very precise questions, so the user can answer with very precise answers and not get lost in the way. And also, you don't have the image on Google Voice, which is uh, a bit sad when you're talking about uh, dating. So we needed to think about new scenarios that we could offer with this technology. So here, here they are. So the first scenario that we offer with Google Voice was to send what we call a daily match. So the user will receive a match every day with someone, and then we would send the photo by text. Um, we also provided dating tips. So this was a lot of, uh, a lot of scenarios around tips around dating like when is the best time to kiss someone, when is the best time to send a message, how to dress for a date, or when to have sex, many, many tips uh, around dating. And then uh, suggest a date location, was if you were looking for a spot for a date uh, around your neighborhood, Lara can, can suggest uh, a romantic place for you. And so I'm gonna let you, if it works, let me know if it works, uh, discover the, the video of, Oh, yes. I've got home. The sounds really low, Elizabeth. Oh, we can't hear it. Is it better? Not really. A bit more, more. Is that better? Now we're getting there, but it still needs a bit higher. 
Okay. I, I'm at the maximum, so. Ah. I have another video after, but the sound is less interesting. So it's okay. Next time there is some subtitles. Um, okay, so here is the flow that we had before. And so basically we added, as I mentioned, the inter international uh, languages and then Google Home. So now it was time to think what else, right? Uh, so we already developed some scenarios for Google Home. We developed some scenarios for Facebook Messenger with the, with the search, ability to search a profile. And so we felt that Clara was almost a real dating coach. And so we decided to push even further to scale her up to a full virtual dating coach chatbot. So what should she do? We, we've seen that she's already doing profile suggestion. And so we added the icebreaker. So people can uh, be introduced to each other and can, can really talk with each other. Then we add the dating tips uh, on Google Home. So we translated them into text. And uh, we push it a bit further to have uh, profile optimization. So uh, advice like how to choose the best photo, how to take a good photo for your profile, how to create the best description for your profile. Uh, and then we also, uh, because we, are, we, are, we were at the earth of the, of the meeting experience, uh, it was essential that we could answer uh, the customer care requests. So we add also that. And so that was a huge project for us. Um, and so first, what we did is to develop an SDK uh, to, in, a, in, the, in a JavaScript uh, environment to be able to develop ones for all meeting platforms, so Android, uh, iOS, and uh, web. But because it was, again, a huge project for us and we need a lot of focus, lots of focus, uh, we decided to stop Facebook Messenger and to stop Google Home and even to stop all the languages to just focus on the meeting experience on, S on the SDK and in French and English. So I'm going to show you another video. The sound is not so important. So if you don't hear it, it's OK. So this is how it worked. Here we are. <laughs> so after a year of trials and errors, we arrived at a point where Lara was very stable as a dating coach and the user uh, loved it. And so we, we, we decided to finally uh, globalize her again. So on top of our flow, we added again the languages. So we translated Lara in, uh, we were back to French and English and we translated her in four more languages to arrive at six languages today. Um, and finally, the, our last project I wanted to talk uh, with you today, uh, talk about with you today, is uh, we help our Japanese colleagues from Pairs uh, to launch their own Japanese Lara um, as a service provider. So the stack with APIs was ideal for that because uh, the Japanese team had already their own environment. So they were able to code their own middleware. So they, they didn't need this part. Um, they were also able to create and connect their own NLP, which is very specific to the Japanese language. So they did care, take care of that too. Uh, but we were able to provide them with the interpreter the, and the back office, so the commercial design bot, which was very specific and very advanced. Um, and we trained them uh, for to use it, so both backend developer and the commercial designer. So that was a really good project for us, very great. So in a nutshell, just to summarize uh, what I've talked about, um, we have created a fully scalable dating coach uh, that can speak six, six languages 
and sends about 2 million messages a day. We have, uh, our tech is used in Japan for a Japanese chatbot. Um, and uh, we, can, we cannot really understand what she says, but we enable that, so that's cool. We've created a new type of job, conversational designer, that we know is a job of the future. But most importantly, uh, every day, we help singles discover other singles, talk to each other, and meet. And that's the most important part, because even if Flaha is virtual, the love she helped the couple to feel is this time for real. So that's it. Thank you. That's it. I don't know if there's any questions. Well, yeah, no, it just takes a second. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, I, okay. I click the I click the join, and then there's just yeah. By the time the system gets up and going, it takes a minute longer. So at the moment, the sort of characteristics that people can um, choose is based on looks and that sort of stuff. There was there's a comedian in um, the US. Uh, she she became famous for doing the um, uh, the miming of the of Trump when he was speaking about um, uh, injecting bleach and all of that sort of stuff. But she said what she wants in a dating app is for the, for it to be able to match to someone who laughs at the same point in movies as she does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is that, so I mean on the example you gave it has the theater but I mean like so the the good point with APIs and everything is you could actually build out some data sets on your other likes. Yeah exactly so actually it's a, it's a bit more complex than that. Uh, I did show like a very simple example but for the conference but of course sure. it's more complex. So we can also we can also look for someone by um, personality attributes. So people people fill out their profile. So we can search for that. But we did also a project a few years back when uh, you could, we would understand the description of the, of the person. So you would describe yourself like, oh, I'm a person who likes to go to a movie and I especially like the comedy comedy show. And uh, I'm also, I love a glass of wine, et cetera, et cetera. And we would, we would read that and we would dis describe you as a specific, we use the word that you use to be able to be searchable by the people. Basically, wow. So that was that was also cool. Okay, cool. How much does we've heard some other speakers today talking about the feedback loop from data as well? How do you do you design new features based on the fact that the majority of current users are searching on a particular characteristic or or a particular aspect? Does that mean you um, identify that and then build more APIs that are going to be able to have additional features for those similar sorts of characteristics or how That's does right. that it's a very interesting question actually it's exactly that the nice thing with a conversational uh, product like a chatbot is that you can ask questions to your user like if you were a real human in front of a user so sometimes we ask them questions about product that we want to develop or just about um whatever they need in the dating world and then we can try to build feature around it so when I introduce the tips that we developed for Google Home, for example, the yep. way it worked actually uh, back then, uh, we ask on Facebook Messenger, the people, we ask them what was their main worry, main concern about dating. And so people answer us lots of things like, I'm too shy, I never get replies, uh, I'm, I'm alone in my search, or I don't know how to dress, all the stuff, people answer them. And then we gather them, we get about, I don't know, thousand hundreds of thousands of feedback so we gather them we we classify them into categories and then we went to see like a real coach and the real coach actually created real scenarios oh, wow. of how she would answer those people and so now we do that most of the time actually we ask like users how they would uh their, what they would do or how they feel or about something wow like. fascinating and then also i imagine then that reduces the uh, that whole iteration failure cycle, you get yep. the feedback much earlier and you're actually more product fit aligned as well. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. We noticed that we could get about uh, 10,000 feedback in a day. Uh, wow. So it's very quick if you want a feedback on a, on a product feature or on a specific flow. 
Uh, one of the specificity also of our team is that we can do lots of A-B tests uh, because we have lots of users and um, the conversational flow, again, is very flexible and very easy to transform. So when I presented, for example, the role of, co of conversational designer, uh, those people are independent uh, in their role. So they don't depend of the deployment phase uh, on the tech side. So they, they have their own deployment phase that they are independent. And so they can push lots of new version and new iteration all the time and get feedback out of it, get a bit test results, and then iterate again. So it can, it can go really, really fast. Wow, how cool. You could even create an API, a API product for romance writers to be yes. able to share with them some the conversation tips and that sort of stuff. So you, yeah, there's amazing. <laughs> I mean, the um, okay, great. This that was fantastic. There's some uh, really great presentation. Thanks. Um, oh, hang on. One last question. Dio for, has asked, how do you deal with people's negative behaviour? How um, do, you, do you have some APIs or um, have you got um, some triggers that are, that puts in some alerts if the conversation's going off the rails? So we don't, um, of course, when, when two persons are discussing together, they're discussing together, uh, and it's not really our business, right? It's private conversation, but if somebody uh, doesn't, doesn't have the right behavior, then on the web, on the meeting site, uh, then you can, or, of course, um, claim this profile to the customer care and then report it, okay? So that's that at another flow. But on the chatbot, uh, what's, what's interesting is we receive sometimes some insults uh, you know, because people, especially on Facebook Messenger, uh, and so we have a flow for that. So when you insult Lara, Lara is not happy, and she won't continue to talk to you if you're not uh, say if you don't apologize. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, we'll go for a break now. Then, and we're back at three thirty for the final set of talks uh, for API Days Paris. Thanks very okay. much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mark.